Earlier on, I spoke to Solomon Queno, who is the Vice President for Private Sector Infrastructure and Industrialization of, at the African Development Bank about increasing capacity, capacity for climate financing as well as the role of African partnership in addressing the continent's development needs. Let's listen in. That's a very broad question. Um, because we, we tend to invest about, you know, six to seven billion dollars a year. Um, you know, in fact, I think it's, uh, we, we, we actually denominate it in what we call units of account. Uh, so I would say that that's close to a, about seven to eight billion dollars a year. Uh, but this is both through our sovereign operations as well as our private sector operations. Uh, so, 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 you know, we are putting, you know, deploying a lot of capital into the different sectors uh, necessary uh, to achieve really the SDGs. Uh, we frame it through what we call our strategic uh, high five priorities. Uh, one is to power Africa, I mean, light up and power Africa. Two is to feed Africa. Uh, three is to industrialize Africa. Uh, four is to integrate Africa, and five is to really uh, improve the quality of life for all Africans. So, so those are really the strategic frameworks through which actually, you know, we deploy that capital uh, to not only achieve uh, the 2030 SDGs, but also the African Union, Union's Agenda 2063. Now, in your view, as Africa, African countries come together to chart this new force to trade within the African borders, do you think Africa will ever be ready to win itself off of the West and respond to its development challenges themselves? So, African integration has always been at the heart of what we do at AFDB. Uh, our forefathers who founded the institution uh, were really focused on integration. But integrating Africa doesn't mean that it's going to exist, you know, uh, void of the rest of the world. Um, you know, we have a globally connected world. But it's very important for us, though, to integrate because our markets are very fragmented. Uh, we, 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 we can produce, you know, uh, raw materials com competitively in one part of Africa, but maybe we can value add to those materials elsewhere in Africa. So we need to have our own regional, uh, you know, regional value chains. And so f for us, really, at the AFDB, we've prioritized six different industrialization value chains. Uh, Agro-processing, because, you know, we have 65% of the uncultivated arable land. Notwithstanding the fact that we have smallholder farming, uh, we still actually produce, uh, you know, competitively, you know, the, uh, the, the foodstuffs. So just imagine really the productivity and efficiencies we can get going forward with increased mechanization, use of digital technologies, et cetera. So agro-processing is one. Cotton to textiles to garments is another. Uh, you know, pharmaceutical and vaccines, especially the lessons from COVID is another. Uh, then we have really, you know, great minerals. We have gas, we have the critical minerals for really the electric, uh, you know, uh, value chain, okay? We need to actually not just produce those commodities and export them uh, overseas, we need to beneficiate those. And then lastly, we need to really, you know, implement the fourth industrial revolution to achieve this. So creating the single market, making sure that, you know, we can actually have borderless societies in Africa, we can produce and value add to trade amongst ourselves, fortifies us as a region, but still makes us then able to actually engage with the rest of the world. The European Union, uh, you know, does actually, you know, even though it's a union, it actually, you know, does trade with the rest of the world. That's what we want to do in Africa. So, Solomon, I want to talk about climate change. It's here, it's happening, we see it, we experience it. I mean, if you look at what's happening in Morocco, Libya, South Africa, and Mozambique, your research shows that Africa faces a financing gap of $1.2 trillion through 2030 in order to fund our sustainable development goals. Share with us some of the bank's capital financing plans to address this shortfall and drive green growth in the region? So one of the things that uh, we have, uh, you know, been doing, um, in fact, two key things, uh, we're, we're going to be issuing hybrid capital. Uh, you know, the African Development Bank and the Inter-American Development Bank, uh, you know, from Latin America and the Caribbean uh, have been at the forefront of really 
the issuance of hybrid capital by supranationals or multi, uh, multilateral development banks such as ourselves. So we're going to do that to increase our capacity to actually help. Uh, we've also really been working with the developed world uh, to, you know, to raise uh, you know, money for our Africa Development Fund through what we call the Climate Action Window. Uh, the, goal, uh, the goal of this is to really achieve about $13 billion to be able to support the poorest countries in Africa, uh, you know, both mitigate and adapt you know, to climate change. And the last thing I've been focusing on, uh, you know, for which President Adeshina is really the strongest advocate, is to use of special drawing rights uh, provided, you know, to prescribed holders such as the African Development Bank. This about three to four times, uh, and and these are reserve assets that can be reallocated by the developed world, you know, African Development Bank, to help support really the funding of uh, you know climate change resilience uh, in Africa. Now, still on the topic of climate, COP28 is coming soon, next month to be exact. What are you expecting? You know, what, what, you know the, some of the key things we're expecting is to really get, uh, you know, greater commitment uh, from the, greater, the greatest emitters in the past and the emitters now to provide really the necessary funding which has been promised uh, to support, I mean, it's always said to be about $100 billion dollars um, you know, uh, uh, you know, annually uh, for at least the next several years. Uh, you mentioned the 1.2 trillion dollars needed uh, by, you know, by uh, 2030. I mean, so so this is really a global public good that we need to collectively uh, address. Uh, so for us, you know, in COP28, we want to really get this funding through different ways. We want to actually have greater capital support for MDBs like ourselves, you know, to actually be able to support the climate change agenda in a lot of countries. Uh, we need actually, you know, for the developed world to also commit, you know, to uh, the hundred billion dollars so that um, a, a lot of our countries can implement their national determined contribution uh, plans. Um, you know, there's loss and damages that needs to be discussed. But we're not going without really trying to also provide initiatives and platforms. So we at the AFDB, uh, along with our partners in Africa 50 and also the African Union, uh, including international partners as well, are launching, uh, you know, are, are progressing the Alliance for Green Infrastructure in Africa. And this is where we're looking to raise $500 million worth of project development and project preparation capital. Uh, to deliberately or, you know, with scale and with speed develop green infrastructure projects, uh, you know, for Africa. And we have to also remember, um, you know, in the con and this we hope will mobilize about $10 billion worth of green infrastructure projects, you know, on a shorter time frame. Uh, but the other thing, the last thing I want to say is that, you know, the climate change challenge in Africa is mostly around adaptation and not mitigation. And, 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 you know, uh, this is where we also need countries to really support us in implementing these adaptation projects, which are looking at renewable uh, infrastructure projects. And just lastly, here at the Africa Partnership Conference, what are you most looking forward to, or rather, what is the key message that the AFDB aims to drive home? That the CFTA is a game changer. Uh, it's committed to it. Partnerships across African countries, uh, including from the investment promotion centers, I mean the invent, inv investment promotion agencies, uh, but also, you know, governments need to implement their part in, you know, nationally to make this a success. Uh, that, you know, um, if the CFTA is successful, uh, Africa is going to be not only a great player, but we would develop, we will create jobs, we will have integrated economies, and we'll be more resilient uh, for future shocks.